why the Christian girls like the bad boys, the bad boys. This is not a scripted video. I'm literally just speaking from my heart and I hope that you learn something from this. First of all, I need to clarify two things. The first is, what do we mean by bad boys? Bad boys in general, yeah, bad boys, boys that do the wrong things, cool looking guys, the cool dudes. I can't believe I just said dudes, that's very unclassy. What I mean by bad boys in the context of this video are the people that do not believe in Jesus, in Christ. The second thing I want to clarify is that this is not only peculiar with Christian women. Sometimes girls tend to go after the bad boys and for a couple of different reasons that I'm going to mention on this video but like it's not just something that is common among Christian women. You would find a lot of girls also attracted to a guy maybe because of his confidence, because of his swag, because of his appearance, because of the way he talks to her, because of the way he addresses her, the way he makes his intentions known, things like that. But yeah, let's talk about the reasons that people fall for these guys, that girls fall for these guys, and then we'll talk about what to do, you know, in such situations. Now, I think one of the first reasons that this happens is because there's a desire to change the person. Some girls feel like, oh, when we start to date, you know, I can show him Christ, I can lead him to Christ, he will become a believer, by the time he sees my lifestyle, he will change, you know, things like that. Please, if you're thinking that way right now, I just want you to realize that yes, people change, but when it comes to actually believing the work that Christ has done on the cross, believing in the gospel, believing the finished works of Christ, while they can see your lifestyle and change morally, change to be like good people. The true change needs to come from within and it is the Holy Spirit that will convince the person to change. You might be doing all the right things and living right to help them but ultimately they would have to make the decision of believing Christ to be. and so this is not something that you can guarantee that if you do they will change. So this is one reason that I find that a lot of people fall for the bad boys because they believe oh he is great in other ways, he has a good attitude behavior and also it's just that he doesn't believe in Christ. That is one reason. The second reason that I see is that a lot of girls that fall for the bad boys, some of them come from strict families. Maybe the parents did not allow them to have fun. They were always kind of always in the house, not going out with their friends, not having that excitement so to speak. But then they come across this person that has the thrill, that has the swag, that is kind of rebellious and does not follow the rules. And it's exciting to them, it's attractive to them. So that is a second reason that I think that people fall for the bad boys. Now the, the third one is that there are a lot of cases where Christian girls are not falling for Christian boys because they are just not physically attracted to them. So maybe because of the way they up here, maybe they just they don't know how to sweet talk, they are just very straight, like they don't like they don't have a way with words and things like that. It might not even just be that, it could also just be physical attraction, it could be maybe people are looking for tall, dark, handsome, this guy is short, if someone is looking for a fair person, this guy is dark, you know, things like that. Just the physical attraction is another reason why some people fall for the bad boys as opposed to. Christian boys. I think there are two more reasons I want to talk about. The first reason is social media. Now, you're looking through your social media, you're scrolling through your feed and you come across like this family, this husband and wife and they're like, oh my goodness, couple girls, stuff like that, you know, and they are not showing you the other side of their relationship that might not be all rosy. Every relationship has its ups and downs, right? Like, there's no relationship that is 100% perfect. But you're seeing this person, maybe they're always obviously always presenting the great sides, how things are going good. And I personally don't have any problem with that. I don't think there's that you need to necessarily be posting the negative parts of your life out there it's because I mean, good parts should encourage people as well, right? You don't want to be posting negative things because who does that help really? But I think that the downside to this is that people see this glam maybe you see this person that is all polished looking nice on social media and then you see this boy that comes to meet you but he's not looking like it will be glam on social media he's looking like something else and then you're like no please this one does not fit into my cup of gold cream please let's go please be going forward let's focus on the next guy so social media is also a reason people 
end up falling for the bad boys because they have unrealistic expectations. I wouldn't say unrealistic, they see stuff on social media and they just kind of compare. Okay, and then when they see somebody that matches what they have desired on social media, then that person might be someone that they get attracted to because it fits into that social media look or someone that has all the looks and everything it fits the aesthetics but the person might not be a christian and so they go with that anyway now the next one is your friends there's a very high chance that if all your friends are falling for bad boys you are likely not going to have a problem falling for bad boys and there's no easy way to say this but it's just the fact if you have like the people that are really close to you the people that have a saying your life so to speak if they are they are comfortable with dating people that are not christians that are not believers that do not give two hoots about who jesus is then you are going to most likely date somebody that is that way even if you're a christian because influence is really really strong stronger than we think and you cannot just say oh it doesn't matter this is that one way or the other we are being influenced every day going by what you're seeing the movie you're watching the friends you're keeping your family or you know the people close to you the conversations you have you're being influenced one way or the other so there's going to be a high chance that you'll be influenced to make that decision if you're with friends that are doing the same so let's talk about how to deal with this situation so let's say you are already falling yakata you are falling for a bad boy you are falling for a bad boy okay not yakata but let's say you are on the verge you are beginning to catch feelings for this boy i know this boy is not a christian i've been in those shows before i'm gonna be honest with you anyway the point is that people deal with this all the time and catch feelings in fact there are times that you don't even have control over who you catch feelings for it happens especially if you are in close proximity with the person if you are always around the person if maybe you guys are working together you guys are going to work out together you guys are doing stuff together if the person is not a christian then you are in that space you're always with the person there's a very high chance that you will begin to develop feelings it happens so don't feel bad that oh i'm developing feelings i'm very unholy and ah god god remove this unholiness for me because i'm developing feelings no it happens you have feelings you are in the physical body so you can develop feelings for whoever but the point is what you do from there one of the things that you certainly want to do when you start to feel this way whether you're falling or you're on the verge of falling is that you want to pray about it whether you believe it or not god cares about your desires god cares about you deeply and god wants your desires to be aligned with his because it is easier that way for you to obey god when your desire is aligned with his this is just it's honestly it's like the simplest thing if your desires are not aligned with god's desire it will be like you're doing ha like hard labor because your desires are in this direction but you're doing something opposite god even doesn't want what you're doing that so god wants your desires to be aligned with he is. If you're desiring something you should not be desiring as a Christian, they can absolutely change. The Bible says in Philippians 2 13, For it is God that works in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So God can make you, God can work desires in you to do things that you should be doing, the things that you should be doing. God can help you to have those desires. If you're a Christian, your spirit is already complete. You have the nature of Christ in, in Christ in you. Your mind, your your physical body might not be demonstrating those things yet, but you can pray to have the expression of those things that are already in your spirit. So pray about your desires because God cares about you and He cares about the things that you desire. Don't just feel like God is looking at you like see the, see the person that this one is having any feelings for. You know, don't don't feel don't feel that way. Know that you are able to have the right desires and pray about it. Talk to God about it. Second thing is be mindful about your associations. Just watch out for who are the people that have the most impact in your life. Like I mentioned before, one way or the other we are all being influenced by something by someone by people by movies by netflix by tv by one thing or the other so you want to be very careful i was still you know i think i posted it on one of my on social media recently like this job of guarding your heart that the bible tells us is not a small thing like it's not a job it's a full-time job because we're in a space where you don't even have to make the effort to see things that are totally contrary to god's word in our lives today you check your phone you're seeing things that oppose god God's word. You are seeing people being cancelled for standing for things that they believe. So you as a believer, the you 
literally need to be very active in guarding your heart. For example, if you're having these feelings for these bad boys, you can't be hanging around them all the time and expect the feelings to fade away. No, you have to make conscious efforts to set boundaries. So I'm not saying like cut them off totally, but you can't, you know, be spending hours and hours talking to them and expect the emotion to just fizzle away like that okay so yeah this is something you want to be careful about don't forget that the bible expressly talks about how we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers there are some controversial things right now that we are experiencing that the bible is not explicitly clear about but on the issue of a believer getting married or being connected being attached to an unbeliever the bible is clear so if the bible is clear about something like that that means it is important it is super important. So you don't want to just wave it away and all. But it clearly says that do not be unequally yoked as an unbeliever. For what business, what does what do wickedness and righteousness have in common? That's how one version puts it. So there's this um, description that Pastor Mildred, for those of you that know her, uses all the time. And sometimes when I hear it, it actually seems a bit harsh, but it's true. She says that it's like going to pick somebody from the morgue and saying that that is who you want to marry because like someone that is not a Christian is spiritually dead yeah. and so you as a believer cannot expect to grow or expect to even still even even if you are not even growing, expect to maintain that same status while staying with someone that is spiritually dead so you have to prioritize the things that God prioritizes so be among people that you know who call you to order like that would help you out that will strengthen you that will talk sense to you if you are whoever wants to be doing like this will talk sense to you the final thing is just know your worth i know people say that all the time well yeah know your worth like you're priceless you're literally a queen and i think a lot of times we have to we have to look at things and put things in perspective you're part of the kingdom god is king in that kingdom and you are one of his children you are part of the kingdom and so there is there is value in you that you must see in yourself there is worth in you that you must see yourself and so that identity you must be conscious of the identity that you have who you represent yeah, and that will definitely tell in who you marry or who you spend your time with and i don't even think this is just about marriage like even friendships there is nothing wrong with having friends that are not christians so, but like when it comes to people that have the most impact in your life that is something you don't want to play around with that's something you want to be intentional about it's not something you want to give to chance so whether it's marriage whether it's friendship whatever it is you need to look at it from the perspective of the identity and who you're representing here on earth you're representing christ here on earth so the kind of things that we do the kind of decisions that we make the kind of person that you decide to spend the rest of your life with you know, should also be a reflection of that you also want to be able to lead other people to christ as well because that is our mission here on earth right that is the great commission like even if they are not opposing you being a christian like there's no way it will affect you if your significant other okay if someone that you're married to if somebody that you're dating is nonchalant about the gospel please i implore you today if you are in those shows if you're falling for a bad boy god can change your desires if you are on the verge if you're catching feelings please try as much as possible to maybe talk to somebody that can help you as well someone that you trust a spiritual leader maybe your leader in church or something try to talk to them about it don't hide don't keep it to yourself pray to god about it don't spend too much time with person in question um you need to take active steps towards kind of being in control and being in charge of your emotions as well and yeah i i really hope that this helps you i hope that you learned something from this video uh, like i said this was unscripted everything i'm saying i'm literally saying it from you know my heart and i pray and i hope that god strengthens you to make the right decisions whoever is in your life right now i also pray that they get saved because that's really really important but like i also pray that god helps your desires and yeah that's the video um thank you for watching if you're new here i appreciate you watching my video and if you are returning i love you guys so much thank you thank you thank you for always coming back to watch my video i really appreciate it please subscribe if you're yet to like this video as well please drop a comment about this video whatever you agree with whatever you don't agree with please share with me in the comments i would really love to see it and thank you again i will see you in the next video bye